Hello folks, this is Jamil Swift for Gunstock Reviews. I'm here in East, East, East Mesa at the set of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountain. It's a YouTube channel that talks all about the history and traditions of the Superstition Mountains area. Today I'm here with Larry, which happens to be the host of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountain. <laughs> How are you doing, buddy? Good. And before we start, I want to be in character, so I'm going to be wearing this more traditional uh, headwear so we can talk about the mysteries of the Superstition Mountains and some of the stories that you have about the the area. And the and first things first, the first, the chapter that I love the most, because you do a lot of gun stories in your in your channel, right? Uh, is the history of the Lost Dragoons, okay? And first of all, what the heck is a Dragoon? Oh, well, a Dragoon pistol. Uh, back in 1871, a bunch of them were sent after the Civil War out here to deal with the Indian Wars. And uh, a set of them, 24 of them, came from uh, uh, Fort Lowell and Tucson to Camp Picket Post over at Superior. And when they were shipped to uh, Fort McDowell, where they were to end up, they were up raided by the Apaches. And several guys were killed, and, and the Apaches chased them up a canyon. And, and uh, one of the, the, there was a lieutenant and a, and a soldier, and the soldier turned and killed one of the Apaches, and the Apaches held back. And after several hours of not seeing any more Indians, they decided to hide the guns. So they buried them under a big boulder, and, um, and when, when they got back to Fort McDowell, the soldier was killed, and only the lieutenant, who had never been in this area, was left, and he could not find where they hid the guns. So they're still out there someplace. Oh, really? Yep. Well, and that description of a big boulder, it's kind of hard because big is a relative, and there's a bunch of boulders out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, but uh, they were attacked at the Narrows, where the uh, dam is today out in Queen Valley. Okay. And they couldn't come on through the pass because that's where the dam was, was the Narrows. And the Apaches chased them back over a ridge or two in a northward training canyon, which we believe is Hewlett Canyon. Description that the officer gave was across from a dominant pointed peak, which is up near Bayou Butte. So we've narrowed it down quite a bit. Okay, so we've got to start looking under every boulder out there. Forget <laughs> about the Lost Dutchman treasure. I want to find those dragoons, man. I mean, uh, gold, who needs gold, man? I mean, when you can find real, you know, Civil War era dragoons, that would be awesome. Maybe we can find it. But what does a dragoon look like? Oh, well, I, I just happen to have one right here. Oh, oh well, <laughs> well, uh, and of course, this is not a real dragoon, right? No. This is a, it's a reproduction that you use for, for demonstration. But that's yeah. exactly what those guns that were buried would look like. Uh, and that's huge, okay? This thing is, what caliber? That's, caliber a, is that? that's a 44. A 44? Cap and ball. Cap and ball, yep. And it's a big gun, okay? This is, you know, compared to a modern um, firearm, this would be what we call an end frame Smith & Wesson or something that is really huge or maybe larger. This thing is really heavy and being a reproduction, um, it's really, really heavy. So tell us more about the stories. I mean, there's so many stories about firearms that are related to this area because of the Indian Wars, right? Yeah, true. They, they started off here, Fort McDowell was established in 1865. And the Union Army came in here not to deal with Apaches. They come in here to deal with the Confederates that were at Tucson. Okay. And as the Tucson, as the Confederates went back to New Mexico, uh, and the Union followed up on them, the Apaches attacked the Union. And uh, we we don't even know why, but. Uh, Fort, Fort McDowell was established in 1865, a few years later, to deal with that problem. I just heard that you were involved in movies and reenactments and all that. Uh, tell me all about it. I came out here in 58 and 59 from Oklahoma, and um, I, I was running cattle out at Queen Valley, and I accidentally found out about uh, Apache Land Movie Ranch. And the, the town had not been completely built yet, but they did have a small back set on the back, and I was doing gunfights on the street without pay, just for the fun of it. I was in the artillery in the Army. I had just gotten out of the Army, and uh, I loved artillery, and I built a Civil War cannon. Oh, wow. A three-inch ordnance rifle with a limber. 
And to, in order to do that, I had to find some wagons that I could get the running gears and wheels off of and stuff like that. And an old timer out here told me about an Indian reservation up north of Gallup. And I went up and I bought 20 wagons that Indians had traded in uh, with, with running gears and wagons. All of them were usable wagons. And I, I took the running gears off a few of them and made cannons for other guys. And other guys heard about this uh, that were into the Civil War and got me involved in the Civil War. And some fella in Mesa heard that I had all these wagons and he wanted to deal with me. And he took me to his place and he had these McClellan saddles. Oh, wow. And I traded wagons for saddles. And the cavalry came into being overnight. And because of the reenactments that we did with other fellow reenactors and stuff, uh, cavalry particularly, like Picacho Pass and things of that nature, I began to get known by the movie people. And although I never joined the clubs that they involved in, I didn't. I never attempted to be an actor. But because of who we were, they used us in movies. Oh, cool! So yeah, I know you have a really big collection of saddles and you have some reproduction firearms, and of course you have the town, <laughs> which is really cool. This is a beautiful set that you have going in here. So Larry, you, you started the Superstition Mountain Museum, and that's how you got started with firearms, collecting older firearms. So tell me more about that. Well, Tom Collinborn and I, who's an, a well-known established historian on the Superstition Mountains, we co-founded it together. Okay. And I already had some, I was already in the Civil War thing, so it was just natural we were going to use uh, military in the museum as exhibits and things like that. And uh, this is one of the reasons I continued collecting things and putting exhibits together, uh, using a lot of my stuff, you know. And uh, that, that's how most of that came about. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you know, this, is, this story could be taken for so long because <laughs> I have so many questions for you, but we only have a limited time here on the channel, but we would like to come back and get into specifics on different firearms, different time periods, and how it started with the flintlocks to the cap and ball to the center fire and so on and so forth. And I think you have examples of many of those in your collection. Yes. So we can talk about firearms through the ages, especially in American history, which is, of course, where we live and your specialty is in it. And where your specialty ends, that's where mine begins. Because <laughs> you, you end up in World War I, World War II, and that's where I start my thing, because I love World War II and so on and so forth, and history after that. So we could definitely bring get a bunch of history coming between you and I and just share some of these historical firearms, whether they're reproductions or originals. You're on. Well, thanks, Larry. Appreciate <laughs> your time. Hey. Thanks for being with us. And guys, thanks for watching. And pre remember, always stay healthy, be safe, and have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.